In the previous trainings of the Dangekit channel, we said that rectification is a process in which a sinusoidal AC voltage source is converted into a DC voltage source or direct current using diodes, thyristors, transistors, or converters. This rectification process can be performed with various half-wave, full-wave, uncontrolled, and fully controlled rectifiers to convert single-phase and three-phase sources to a constant DC level. In this tutorial, we will introduce full-wave rectifier and its controlled and uncontrolled types. Rectifiers are one of the main building blocks of AC power conversion with half-wave or full-wave rectification and generally use diodes for rectification. Diodes pass alternating current in the direct direction and block it in the reverse direction. As a result, they can produce a DC voltage. The control rectifiers, components such as thyristors are also used. However, direct current which has been rectified by diodes is not as pure as that obtained from, say, a battery source, but has voltage changes in the form of ripples superimposed on it as a result of the alternating supply. But for single-phase rectification to take place, we need an AC sinusoidal waveform of a fixed voltage and frequency as shown. Full Wave Rectification Unlike the half-wave rectifier we explained in the previous video about half-wave rectifiers, the full-wave rectifier uses both halves of the input sine waveform to provide a unidirectional output. This is because a full-wave rectifier basically consists of two half-wave rectifiers connected together to feed the load. The single-phase full-wave rectifier does this by using four diodes arranged in a bridge arrangement passing the positive half of the waveform as before, but inverting the negative half of the sine wave to create a pulsating DC output. Even though the voltage and current output from the rectifier is pulsating, it does not reverse direction using the full 100% of the input waveform and thus providing full-wave rectification. Single Phase Full Wave Bridge Rectifier This bridge configuration of diodes provides full wave rectification because at any time two of the four diodes are forward biased while the other two are reverse biased. Thus there are two diodes in the conduction path instead of the single one for the half wave rectifier. Therefore there will be a difference in voltage amplitude between VIN and VOUT due to the two forward voltage drops of the serially connected diodes. Here as before, for simplicity of the maths, we will assume ideal diodes. So how does the single phase full wave rectifier work? During the positive half cycle of VIN, diodes D1 and D4 are forward biased while diodes D2 and D3 are reverse biased. Then for the positive half cycle of the input waveform, current flows along the path of D1, A, RL, B, D4, and back to the supply. During the negative half cycle of VIN, Diodes D3 and D2 are forward biased while diodes D4 and D1 are reverse biased. For the negative half cycle of the input waveform, current flows along the path of D3, A, RL, B, D2 and back to the supply. In both cases the positive and negative half cycles of the input waveform produce positive output peaks regardless of polarity of input waveform and as such the load current, I always flows in the same direction through the load, RL between points or nodes A and B. Thus the negative half cycle of the source becomes a positive half cycle at load. So no matter which set of diodes are conducting, node A is always more positive than node B. Therefore, the load current and voltage are unidirectional or DC, 
and the output waveform will be like this. Although this pulsar output waveform uses 100% of the input waveform, its average DC voltage, or current, will not have the same value as the input. In the training of the half-wave rectifier, we saw that the average DC value, or the average of a half-wave of the sinusoidal waveform is equal to the product of 0.637 in the maximum value of the amplitude. In a full wave for the half-wave rectifier, the DC value is equal to 0.318 of the maximum value of the amplitude. However, unlike a half-wave rectifier, a full-wave rectifier has two positive half-waves for each input frequency, which is a different value than a half-wave rectifier. Here we can see that for a full-wave rectifier, for each positive peak, there is an average value of 0.637 asterisk max, and as there are two peaks per input waveform, this means there are two lots of average value summed together. Thus the DC output voltage of a full-wave rectifier is twice that of the previous half-wave rectifier. If the maximum amplitude is 1, the average or DC value equivalent seen across the load resistance, RL will be So the expressions for the average value of voltage or current for a full-wave rectifier will be As before, the maximum value, a max is that of the input waveform, but we could also use its RMS, or root mean squared value to find the equivalent DC output value of a single phase full wave rectifier. To determine the average voltage for a full wave rectifier, we multiply the RMS value by 0.9 giving. We can then see that a full-wave rectifier circuit converts either the positive or negative halves of an AC waveform into a pulse DC output that has the value as shown. For diodes are used to construct a single-phase full-wave bridge rectifier circuit, which is required to supply a purely resistive load of 1K at 220 volts DC. Calculate the RMS value of the input voltage required, the total load current drawn from the supply, the load current passed by each diode and the total power dissipated by the load. Assume ideal diode characteristics. Sorry. Full wave half control bridge rectifier. Full wave rectification has many advantages over the simpler half wave rectifier, such as the output voltage is more consistent, as a higher average output voltage, the input frequency is doubled by the process of rectification, and requires a smaller capacitance value smoothing capacitor if one is required. But we can improve on the design of the bridge rectifier by using thyristors instead of diodes in its design. By replacing the diodes within a single-phase bridge rectifier with thyristors, we can create a phase-controlled AC to DC rectifier for converting the constant AC supply voltage into a controlled DC output voltage. Phase-controlled rectifiers either half-controlled or fully controlled have many applications in variable voltage power supplies and motor control. The single-phase bridge rectifier is what is termed an uncontrolled rectifier in that the applied input voltage is passed directly to the output terminals providing a fixed average DC equivalent value. To convert an uncontrolled bridge rectifier into a single-phase half-controlled rectifier circuit we just need to replace two of the diodes with thyristors, SCRs, as shown. In the half-controlled rectifier configuration, the average DC load voltage is controlled using two thyristors and two diodes. 
As we learnt in our tutorial about thyristors, a thyristor will only conduct ON state when its anode, A, is more positive than its cathode, K, and a firing pulse is applied to its gate, G, terminal. Otherwise it remains inactive. We also learnt that once ON, a thyristor is only turned OFF again when its gate signal is removed and the anode current has fallen below the thyristor's holding current, IH as the AC supply voltage reverse biases it. So by delaying the firing pulse applied to the thyristor's gate terminal for a controlled period of time, or angle, alpha, after the AC supply voltage has passed the zero voltage crossing of the anode to cathode voltage, we can control when the thyristor starts to conduct current and hence control the average output voltage. During the positive half cycle of the input waveform, current flows along the path of SCR1 and D2 and back to the supply. During the negative half cycle of VAN, conduction is through SCR2 and D1 and back to the supply. It is clear then that one thyristor from the top group, SCR1 or SCR2, and its corresponding diode from the bottom group, D2 or D1, must conduct together for, for any load current to flow. Thus the average output voltage, VAVE, is dependent on the firing angle alpha for the two thyristors included in the half-controlled rectifier as the two diodes are uncontrolled and pass current whenever forward biased. So for any gate firing angle, alpha, the average output voltage is given by We can take this idea of controlling the average output voltage of the bridge one step further by replacing all four diodes with thyristors giving us a fully controlled bridge rectifier circuit. Fully controlled bridge rectifier. Single phase fully controlled bridge rectifiers are known more commonly as AC to DC converters. Fully controlled bridge converters are widely used in the speed control of DC machines and is easily obtained by replacing all four diodes of a bridge rectifier with thyristors as shown. In the fully controlled rectifier configuration, the average DC load voltage is controlled using two thyristors per half cycle. Thyristors SCR1 and SCR4 are fired together as a pair during the positive half cycle, while thyristors SCR3 and SCR4 are also fired together as a pair during the negative half cycle. That is 180 after SCR1 and SCR4. Then during continuous conduction mode of operation, the four thyristors are constantly being switched as alternate pairs to maintain the average or equivalent DC output voltage. As with the half-controlled rectifier, the output voltage can be fully controlled by varying the thyristors firing delay angle, alpha. Then we have seen here in this tutorial about single phase rectification that single phase rectifiers can take on many forms to convert AC voltage to DC voltage from uncontrolled single diode half wave rectifiers to fully controlled full wave bridge rectifiers using four thyristors. The advantages of the half wave rectifier are its simplicity and low cost as it requires only one diode. However, it is not very efficient as only half of the input signal is used producing a low average output voltage.
the full wave rectifier is more efficient than the half wave rectifier as it uses both half cycles of the input sine wave producing a higher average or equivalent DC output voltage. A disadvantage of the full wave bridge circuit is that is that it requires four diodes. Phase controlled rectification uses combinations of diodes and thyristors SCRs, to convert the AC input voltage into a controlled DC output voltage. Fully controlled rectifiers use four thyristors in their configuration, whereas half controlled rectifiers use a combination of both thyristors and diodes.